Um, okay, next uh, four uh, mantras uh, from the list, which is about the structure of energy, is actually four steps of Kundalini. And um, well, in the Kriya Yoga tradition and in the Tantra Yoga tradition, well, there are I don't know even how many actually plenty kinds of approaches. You know, five aspects, six, seven, and as you may imagine, that more steps of Kundalini doesn't mean that it's better approach. <laughs> It's just different approaches. So, yeah, how many aspects, how many steps Kundalini energy has? Okay, four, five, six, seven, just different approaches. Does mean that uh, more steps, better approach. But in this kind of mantra, we have um, uh, we have uh, like four mantras, and that means four aspects. The first one is Agni Kundalini and the Agni Kundalini is uh, connected with the uh, inhalation when energy goes up from the coccyx to generally speaking head or fontanel or midbrain this part of the body and this is like Agni Kundalini means Kundalini or energy of fire it's really if we experience, feel sensation, or see with our clear ones, it's like fire. Uh, the next step is the Surya Kundalini, which is uh, the stage. Okay, of course, it's connected with, um, you know, uh, so called uh, Antar Kumbhakam, when we hold the breath after inhalation uh, and that's when energy shine as the divine sun in the area of Ajna and Sahasrara um, well that's the reason why we call it Surya Kundalini and the Surya means sun which is shining actually in the area of midbrain and the fontanel then the uh, third step is Soma Kundalini or Kundalini connected with the moon energy, with the nectar and of course exhalation. When we exhale and energy uh, comes down from midbrain to uh, coccyx. And, um, it's of course uh, if uh, we use um, our inner vision divine vision we can see it as the moon energy something in a sense liquid but of course it's not physical it can be physical but um, essentially it's like an astral plan um, kind of energy but it can be physical as well and uh, fourth step is a Jyoti Kundalini or Kundalini of light and of course it's con related to uh, Bahir Kumbhakam when we hold breath after exhalation the Jyoti means light and this step is the really um, final which is like it's no motion no movement up or down just shining as the supreme light and in this, um, uh, okay, you can see four Bija mantras for each step, for each aspect. What is the wonderful? Um, the most questionable about Kundalini is that must we awake this Kundalini power? Because we have so many schools and traditions, workshops, books, videos seminars about how to experience awakening of this kundalini shakti or kundalini power um, according to this approach and according to okay what my 
uh, Guru Yogi Ramak told me that okay pff, let us say it's meaningless to to practice awakening of Kundalini because each and every human being already uh, has this Kundalini it is impossible to uh, to practice whatever you know to to experience this awakening because you can't survive even a second without Kundalini it's out of question that like you have to awaken to awake whatever we mean call it or describe because it's already awakened from the very beginning okay but it, in some people it's very active and in some people it's a little bit less lesser yeah active. that is the point this is the point anyway each and every human being has Kundalini so it means if you come to some okay, ashram or you participate in any program and they promise you that you will experience awakening of the Kundalini it's like kind of blah blah misunderstanding what kind of awakening are you going to experience because you already um, have this Kundalini but your question is actually the point because some people they have very weak Kundalini some are very powerful and interesting thing is that quite many people they know nothing about Kundalini but they have very powerful one I may give you a lot of examples you know any uh, super rich person self-made multimillionaires I, I don't mean the people who just um, received all that from grandfather <laughs> but you know I mean the self-made multimillionaires or even billionaires they have a huge kundalini um, powerful politicians no, they, 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 they all have this um, I mean scientists artists uh, you know rock stars they have all very powerful kundalini even without knowledge about existence of kundalini can we say that uh, kundalini is a kind of uh, life energy or maybe just life energy in itself yeah it's a life energy that's the reason why we can't survive even a second without kundalini it's a life force life energy and um, well it's uh, kind of um, neutral you know neutral in a sense our um, thinking process our motivation uh, already you know put this divine energy in a good positive way or maybe destructive way because you know the people who are leaders of any criminal groups um, terrorists uh, leaders they have also the same kind of energy and at the same time you know um, great saints like mother Teresa also the same kind of energy but the motivation love compassion or hatred that may put this uh, energy in a like you know you may <clears throat> do some good job for yourself and the people around you or me you, you may destroy you know people uh, all around you that's that's the point and of course when we practice uh, bija mantras or for example christian prayer muslim prayer jewish prayer you now we have um, um, chance and actually not only chance but actually we activate this kundalini energy and uh, okay for some people it can be okay only mantra may do so of course not because kundalini is a sanskrit term but at the same time it's a universal power and it means doesn't matter christian prayer or hindu prayer or this or that kind of meditation and uh, of course kundalini strongly related to the sexual power and it means if somebody is sexually weak um, then kundalini can be much more like 
less powerful than it must be. At the same time, people who, because of any, you know, reason, just physical body, may, can be more powerful, less powerful, uh, the sexual energy can be more powerful than, in this case, Kundalini is more powerful. And because Kundalini essentially is a creative power, but let me repeat again, this is creative power which can be destructive if we don't know how to put it in the you know, proper way. And what does it mean proper way to use Kundalini? Actually, the first of all, our motivation. If we are good and kind people and we think about, okay, I want to be healthy, I want to be successful, I want to be more rich, I want to be like more famous, I want to do this, that. But the motivation must be, okay, I want to have more actually, it's not, not bad. But the motivation is like, okay, to help other people, other people must benefit because of my um, project. Uh, that is a proper motivation and I think it's wrong to speak that we have to put as the motivation is okay I don't care about myself I want to serve people it's unrealistic of course um, we want to be happy uh, healthy rich uh, with a greater um, creative okay ideas and the chances to express our creativity but also we have to to have concern about other people this is the proper motivation and also you know um, I want to repeat again and again that um, if somebody uh, okay if you know your life purpose uh, and you know life purpose is always divine because your life purpose based on your talents your divine mission it can be great it can be small you know divine mission doesn't mean that you have you know to transform this world you may transform just 10 people around you this is also divine mission and um, well um, your life purpose is all, always divine and that's reason why uh, if you put your um, kundalini in the way of your well, life purpose it will be always uh, great and those people who may achieve huge financial and political power and harm world okay like Adolf Hitler for example you know they're just ill people but by the way I don't think that they are bad but they're just ill people maybe possessed by some evil spirits or just mentally challenged but um, you know I'm trying to see divinity in each and every human being even if it's like bad bloody dictator because my approach to the bad and bloody dictators that they're just ill guys so that's about um, Kundalini of course well on the top level how can we use this kundalini for the purpose of meditation and self-inquiry the top level the top level which is divine level is a self-inquiry and a meditation the human level is life purpose how to fulfill life purpose 